Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part 12 of my new discovery build. Uh, definitely a lot of progress in coming down to the wire here and completing this build. Uh, this week, uh, or this video, I've completed the external painting with all of the paint masks from the fantastic Aztec Dummy paint mask set, which I go over a lot in detail. Uh, and I also get the final blending coat on it, so it's looking fantastic. Uh, now, just to say a few things about the process that, um, that Lou Dalmasso came up with. Uh, he generally has the idea that you start with stark colors and contrast with darker grays and lighter grays and white and things like that. And then in the end, you blend it together to give it a homogenous look and make it look like an overall light gray spaceship when you're looking at it from a little distance. But close up, you see the various panels. So the idea here is that the ship itself was not painted different colors. It was painted, um, obviously, when they built it. But obviously, they built it in different panels. And I'm going to assume they built it in outer space, in harsh environment, because it's such a big ship. Uh, and so you're going to have some, some weathering on the panels that were painted in different, in different ways. And some of them are going to look lighter gray, some are darker gray. But in the end, they're all really meant to be the same color originally. Uh, and then also, the ship's been in space for six months. So it's going to have a lot of weathering on the outside panels also. So, all right, uh, let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm beginning work on painting the sphere, which is the last part of the ship that I have to paint. Uh, and there'll be quite a bit of paneling. So one more thing I had to do before I'm ready to start getting this together and get it painted was I needed to light block these inside panels. Uh, the interiors are pretty well light blocked as far as um, only some minor light leaks, but not bright enough that they're gonna glow through the the sphere, uh, especially since the sphere is going to have four different layers of grays on it, so it's going to fairly be light blocked on its own. But uh, the interior, uh, these are the resin pieces that I glued on from the Stargazer kit. And, um, and definitely there's going to be a lot of light coming directly through these from the, um, from the, the pod bay and also through the pod bay doors. So I taped the doors in place. I have taken the tape off now. Only, um, only this one over here is glued in place. The middle one and the left one are going to stay removable. So I can have the extended pod. So I first of all just painted this front section and around those. made sure that I got those pretty liberally, but around them as well. I sprayed them with some flat black from Krylon. Let that dry. Uh, then I went over it with some chrome silver from Tamiya. Uh, primarily because silver is a lot easier to paint white over than black is. And I didn't want to get like a light gray color. So I let that dry and then I just went over it with some testers flat white in a can which I had. And just again liberally coated that so it's nice and white. So that's all dried now. And I'm going to leave the, um, the doors in. They're just kind of pressure fit. For when I paint the the outside of it because obviously those are going to be painted to match the rest of the ship and have different panels on them and things like that so all right so now that I light block that and like I said I'm not worrying about the rest of this so much there's not really going to be any light coming out of the back of the pod bay that I'm going to have to worry about um, light blocking so so now that I'm ready to go ahead and start painting the outside it's time to go ahead and glue the back collar onto the bottom of the ship. Uh, and as I showed previously, obviously the, the top one is just held on by magnets, so that doesn't have to be glued in any way. And I also did not light block this one at all because again, there's no paint, there's no light coming through except right through that, that cockpit window, which already has black on it. So I'm gonna have to mask that off as well for when I paint the outside. So let me go ahead and get this glued onto the collar, make sure I get it lined up with the magnets and then I'll be ready to go ahead and start painting the outside of the ship with the several layers of grays like I did the, the collars.
So here's my original discovery that I built three years ago. So I'm kind of looking at some of the panels. This was also not screen accurate, but I do want to get an idea of, of some of the areas that are going to be dark. Uh, they're fairly random around it. So my idea was that I wanted to only paint like certain panels that are going to be dark that I'll mask off, but it's going to be kind of hard not to paint most of the ship. I just hate to have four layers of paint over it. It tends to get a little much, but um, I'll try to do it lightly and kind of go from there. So, but I can use this as a, as a template as it were. And then I have that windshield area taped off as well. So, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is start with the dark gray, put on some light layers over a good part. It looks like mostly the, the middle ring definitely, um, like I said, there's a lot of panels, so it's going to be hard not to paint pretty much the whole thing with the dark, so, okay. So I got a coating of the dark gray on the sphere, most of the spots. There are some light spots, as you can see. Again, I tried to do it fairly light because by the time I'm done, I'm going to have at least four coats of paint on this, actually about five. So it tends to get kind of thick. And um, Tamiya's, when you put them over a curved surface, tend to get kind of powdery. Uh, on my original one, I had to go back and do a little bit of light sanding or some some wet sanding to smooth it down a bit. I'm gonna to try to avoid that if I can. So what I'm doing now is I have my instructions from Aztec Dummy. And uh, one thing they have which is really cool is they have a picture, sorry, you're getting some bleed through, of the actual prop. Try to put that down so you're not seeing the lettering. So there's the one on the right is the actual ship from the film. There's the one that Lou did for his video. So this one here, I, I, I think I recall now, I tended to use this as a reference to do at least the front of the sphere to get some ideas of how that's supposed to look and, and get some, some general concepts done. It also shows the, the collar on the back of the sphere and how he did that. And some real pictures again, the actual filming model, which is nice. So I'm not looking again at screen accuracy but it still kind of gives me an idea of how I want it to ultimately look when it's done. And you can see that there are like some darker panels like right here, possibly this one, some lighter ones, lighter still, that kind of thing, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting out some of these shapes. Mostly a lot of these concentric circle ones, these ones here the ones for the doors, that sort of thing, and start working on it. Now, what I did was I took this piece of, this styrofoam was a, a longer section that was used to, um, to ship some resin to me from Amazon. I just cut off a square of it since it's round, and it's nice because I can just balance this in it and, and have it uh, nicely supported, so, all right. a bit of progress on the masks to keep the dark gray on the sphere. Now I did um, come across something. I was looking for these parts here, these little sections that are pretty long. And I looked over both sheets and I just couldn't find them. And I was wondering if I was missing a sheet. So I went back into my envelope that it came in and there are two additional long strips right here, which I had forgotten about. And they have uh, these parts right here. They have some of these longer strips, which you can use. Uh, they also have these pieces, which are necessary for masking over like these exhausts here. If you want to just airbrush those, some kind of metallic and also the, um, the doors, which I couldn't find them. And I, I thought I had remembered seeing them. So I just kind of fashioned my own. 
So I'll just peel those off and go ahead and use the ones that came with it because I was I knew that there was ones I just had forgotten where they were. But uh, so if you get this kit, definitely look inside the pack. I guess he had made these in a separate little strip. Uh, it also has a bunch of little teeny parts right here too, which go along a lot of these little bits here, which I also cut some of the bigger ones separate, which is fine. That wasn't a big deal. So, all right, but getting a lot done here, just about done with those. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and put on a um, the next color of neutral green. <laughs> And here is the completed masking of the first round over the dark gray. And I corrected those pieces right there that were the wrong parts. And a few other ones I did as well. And keep in mind, these are the only, only the parts that are going to stay the dark gray. I'm going to then have ones that are neutral gray, then ones that are light gray, and then the final coat will just be the sky gray over everything. So... It's kind of hard sometimes to visualize it, which you want to stay dark, but I like to, to kind of randomize it somewhat. And then certain parts, I definitely want to, um, to highlight, like this little part right here. That's um, one of the main things right there, as you can see on the actual ship. I don't know why that always stood out to me, but I always kind of like that, <laughs> the little, bits of paneling right there and they look like they're a couple different colors so we'll see I might end up putting a little bit of black in there once I'm done we'll see but uh, I just cut up a couple little strips and put it there so all right so that's all masked now I am ready to go ahead and put over a um, neutral gray which is the next color and then we'll start on the second round of masking <laughs> And there is the uh, coating of neutral gray over the whole thing. I'll just let that dry for a little bit, for quite a while, and then we'll be ready to put on the second layer of masks. And the first layer will remain on because those will keep the dark gray covered up until I get all layers on. And there is the second layer of masks over top of the neutral gray to keep those neutral gray. Now, um, one thing that I noticed, and I noticed this on my first build three years ago of this ship, if you're using Tamiya flat colors, and I'm airbrushing them on, uh, on a curved surface, if you do several layers, they start to become kind of rough and chalky and having like a just kind of a rough looking material. So I went back over and I did a little bit of sanding. I used a 400 grit sandpaper and I, um, I wet sanded it. But I wanted to be careful because I didn't want to rub it all down. Now some spots like these that were really rough, I left those as they are because they're gonna get painted over with the next layer. Uh, the parts that I put mass over, I made sure were clean 
and looked nice and smooth for the neutral gray. I tried to focus a lot on the main trench, as you can see, because I know that has a lot of darker colors in it that kind of accentuate it. The same with these little trenches down here. So up here, uh, that's already the dark part. Here, for the dark gray, here's gonna be the neutral, the neutral gray. This is dark gray. More neutral. More dark in through this area, of course. Put some over here for the neutral one here and so on. And I'll do the same. I'll finish it then once I do the, the next coating of light gray. I'll panel some of these as well and kind of give a nice random panel pattern look to that trench coming through it. I also tried to do a little tiny bit pieces like this just to give it some little dark colors here and there. All right, there's the top of it. Now some of these panels, the, this didn't come with ones that were exact, exactly the right size or shape, but they were close. So like this one here, I had to fit it in and cut off some parts and then augment a few pieces to just fill it in. But it had the right curve for me at the bottom and the top. Same with this piece. It had the nice curve that went around the collar, but I had to cut it and cut around like that little part there at the bottom and that sort of thing. This one was fairly easy because I already had a part there on the left side against that curve, against the collar. So I just taped off the part to the right so that it'll be two, sorry for the shakiness. It'll be two, um, two panels next to each other that are different shades. And there's the back. And again, I try to keep it random. Like I didn't put these all equidistant from each other. They're kind of odd shapes. And I took into account, like, if there's something up here that's pretty obvious, I didn't want to necessarily put one up here. I put them down over here just to kind of keep a nice, a nice random look to it. So, all right. Uh, a few of the things I did is I cleaned up some little parts around this connector for the pod. And obviously, this is going to be painted over, so that's not a problem. I also did a little bit of puttying around... around the hatch because this is the resin one that I, I cut out and inset it. This is one from Stargazer. Uh, there was still a little bit of gaps around the edges where you can see the red. I used uh, some Bondo spot putty right there, right down here. So I sanded this a little bit more over here in a corner and sanded that. And again, this panel is gonna be another color this panel, I'm gonna leave the um, the next color, which is the light gray, and then I'll, I'll cover that off and then cover some more panels, so. Okay, so, oh, get up there. All right, so really cool set. I really like this, um, all the different parts that are in this Aztec dummy set from Lou Dalmasso. It really helps to paint these panels and make it look random and really cool, so. All right, let me go ahead and get a, um, back up a bit sorry all right so the next coat is going to be the light gray I'll go ahead and put that over all of this I may have to I'll probably have to go back and do a little bit of wet sanding on that as well to get that down to where I need it to be uh, and then that'll just leave the last masking set and then I'll do the sky gray and then once that's all done, all of these masks will be removed and I'll do a blending coat over the entire ship to bring it all together. Possibly one final uh, wet sanding, cleaning up any areas. Hopefully none of the paint comes off from these masks. Usually it doesn't, but occasionally you get a little speck. Might have to clean that up a bit. So, okay, but coming along really, really well. All right, and here is the coat of the light gray over top, and I did some sanding as well, some wet sanding. Uh, this isn't that much lighter than the, the neutral gray. Once I sanded it down a bit, it got a little bit lighter. I took off some of the chalkiness 
from it. And you can tell too, like I left it on where the, the masks were, you can see how rough that looks and it looks darker than the rest of it, like right there. So the more layers I put on, the more pronounced that rough chalky texture becomes. So it's workable, it's not a big deal. I think again, I, it just has to do with the curve, curve surfaces and the multiple layers. So let me do one more layer of masks over this and then I'll put on the final color, which is the sky gray, which is definitely lighter. And once that's all done, then I can take off the mask, do a final sanding, touching up, that sort of thing. And then I'll be ready to do the blending coat, which will lighten it all up. So, okay. <music> All right, so I put on the last coat of the sky gray, let that dry sufficiently for a few hours, and then I took off all the masks as I showed earlier in that little pile of masks. Quite a lot of masks. It took me probably a good half an hour to an hour just to remove them all. But it looks really, really fantastic. Some very minor things here and there that I have to clean up a bit, but I'm real happy with how those turned out. Definitely gives me a lot of uh, contrast on the ship. There's the bottom. So a few spots I'm going to do some very light wet sanding with a very fine grit sandpaper. Like maybe like in that area right there you can see where it's a little darker. That kind of thing. I still have to do a, a little bit of detailing, like those those nozzles there. There's a mask that goes around them, and they're gonna I'm gonna paint those like a chrome silver. Maybe a little bit more on those little panels there. Paint some of those some different colors as well. Because they're easy to do. Same with the back. Okay. All right. So once again, the colors are very stark. The contrast is very stark between all the colors. But now that this is just about complete, except for those little touches, I'll be able to put it together with the, the rest of the ship and do a blending coat. And for the blending coat, I'll just take white paint, put in just like a little dab of some, some gray, just to really make it very, very slightly off-white, you know, or a super light gray. And then that will be used to blend, to mist it lightly from a distance over the entire ship. I don't want to lose the, the contrast and the detail, but I want it to blend together. So when you look at it from a distance, you're just going to see a light gray. When you get closer, you're going to make out all the panels. So, okay. Very happy with how that little section right there turned out. I had a real problem with that the last time on my first build that I had, but I like that distinctive look. Cause that's, that's an image, that's a part that you always see in the, in the front of the ship. And I really wanted to, to reproduce that, so. Okay, let me again put this on to the um, front half of the spine and show you how that's gonna look with the um, other collar on there.
right, looking pretty cool. And you can see how that now blends in with the rest of the ship. Because they use the same colors and the same masking technique on that collar that attaches to it. Okay, very, very cool. Sorry. And obviously I still have the cockpit section masked off so that stays flat black. I will leave that on there until I'm done with the final blending coat and then I'll take it off. I may have to touch up some of that as well, so, but looking pretty cool. Let's see. Yeah, it's like this. Long panning shot. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get on those touch ups and then uh, be ready to start doing the last blending coat. As I showed in the previous video, I painted the nozzles on the sphere silver, chrome silver, using the, the little templates that came with the, with the masking set. Okay. I also painted the little one on the collar behind the sphere, right there. And then I also went back and there were a few areas that I had to touch up to do a white pass of some of the, the paneling. Uh, those parts right there needed a white pass. The ends, those flat parts are the ends of the nozzles. And this front section. So I redid those. I also went back with some flat black and I painted on the inside of the engine nozzles themselves and just a little bit on some of those parts surrounding it so that those will be darker but they'll still be brought back up again when I do the the final blending coat all right so pretty much completed now with all of the parts the last thing now to do is the blending coat which is a bit tricky I'm a bit nervous about it because you, you got to take it light the key to it is you have to mist from a distance so it it just lightly covers it and then start slow, do layer by layer. You don't want any obvious hot spots, especially on the smooth dome. I'm going to start in the back with this and the spines in these parts here. And once I kind of get that technique together, then I'll kind of move forward on it. Um, I did get a question and other people have questioned um, as to why not just use really close shades of gray. And that way, in the end, you don't have to blend them. Uh, well, a couple of reasons. One, because it would be hard to find grays that are very close to each other on the spectrum unless you made them custom and you mix gray yourself. Secondly, you would still get what looks like a specific separation between each panel, so it would look as though each panel was simply painted a slightly different gray. Whereas the look that we're wanting to get in the end is that this ship was assembled probably in space over maybe six months. Who knows how long it took them to build it. Uh, but the size of it, it would have to have been built in space, you would think. And then obviously each of these panels were, were painted separately and different at different times. Think of it like when you build a car or you have a car and you've had it for a couple years and uh, you have to replace a front quarter panel and you paint it with the same exact paint that the manufacturer made for it, it's still gonna be slightly off only because the rest of the car has imperceptibly changed because of sunlight and weathering and things like that. So the same thing, this thing's in space and it's, it's uh, subject to cold temperatures and hot temperatures with sunlight and that kind of thing. So you're gonna get some fading over time. And the same thing, this, we're, we're told that it's six months later that the ship is going to Jupiter. So how long has it been in space before that? 
it's well i think actually it's six months after they found the thing but still six months is a long time for this thing to be up in space and uh subjected to the elements so in the end when you blend this all down it's going to look more homogeneous but at the same time you're going to notice that some of the panels are a little distinct and different which is what gives it more of a realism as to it being a large spaceship versus just a small model kit that you painted all one color so all right let me go and put this together real quick just to kind of show you how it looks with at this stage right before i do the final blending coat All right, so it's really hard to get the ship all in one shot. And what I've done is I've taken down my original discovery from up on the wall to kind of show you the comparison. Now I'm gonna to try to not take back too much. You can see here are the different panels and you can still make out the panels. I want them to be a little starker, so I'm gonna to try to be a little lighter handed with the, the blending coat on the new one in order to get a little better representation. The same with up here and again you can make out the different panels when you get close up but i want to be careful not to obliterate i don't really think i did on the first one i think it turned out well but a few panels that i wanted to keep sharper i ended up obscuring a bit like that um that little area right there and it looks a bit rough that was one of my regrets of my first one that I don't like how that looks there. But I didn't want to try to paint it and blend it back in, so I just left it as it was. So I'm gonna be a little more careful on the new one. But uh, you can see that uh, there's quite a difference between how they look right now in this state. All right. I'm working on creating the final top coat that I want to blend over the ship. So it's a bit tricky because you've got to take several things into account. So the first thing I started with is this empty bottle with the lid and I just filled it maybe a little more than half with just flat white. Then I went ahead and I used this little popsicle stick to lightly put in a drop here at a time of some neutral gray and then shake it up really good and then look at the comparison. So if you look right now, you can see that clearly this is more of a lighter gray than the white. So it is different than this color here. But I'm also looking at the darker shades like the sky gray, which is the lightest of all the grays on my ship. So clearly it's gotta be lighter than that, but it's gotta be darker than white because the spine and the propulsion unit have a lot of white on them, just pure white. So, you want to be careful because in the end, this is not going to be the final color of the ship. It's going to be darker because everything that I'm going over is darker than this. So it's going to take advantage of the fact that you paint a light color over something dark. It's going to look darker. So that's looking real close to what I want it to be. I'm just starting to now see the difference between the two. I think I might just leave it there and then start doing a little bit of test, possibly like on the bottom of the command sphere, where if it's not quite the shed I want, I can always darken it a bit and do it again, but it won't be as noticeable. So it's a tricky proposition, uh, plus the fact that I definitely have to make enough paint. Some of this is gonna be wasted, but you have to use enough paint because once I get that color, I can't go ahead and remix it again. I'm not gonna get that exact proportion again. So uh, let me go ahead and stick with that for now and I'll start a little bit of a test and do a little bit of misting and see how it looks. And here is my first test on the bottom of the propulsion unit. 
And you can see, if I take it back a bit, it looks pretty good. It looks nice and homogenous, like it's just a light gray over the ship. But certainly when I get in closer, I can make out various panels that are still darker. Even some of the white, you can see there, some of the white panels, which is what I want. I don't want it to be completely obscured. That kind of defeats the purpose of having the white. And um, and just to show you the difference, if I flip it over, here's, here's what we started with. So that's how it looks without any blending coat at all. Very stark, very obvious. And then this is how it looks with the blending coat. So I'm gonna leave that there for right now. And that's fully dried. I've let that set up for about an hour just to be sure. Because you have to make sure to, to see it dried because a lot of times it changes its shade a bit when once it does dry. So I'm happy with the gray that I have. I don't think I need to um, make that any darker because if I do, I'm gonna end up with a, with a um, too dark of a color. So let me show you my one on the wall. You can see up there. Hold on, let me take this up here and try to compare. All right, there we go. So the color is really close as far as the light gray, which I like. Uh, there is a little more detail visible in the new one than there is in the old one, which I want to try to keep because I think I, I did a little too much on the first one. And that's one of the, the pitfalls you have to watch out for. Don't over blend it because then you end up with you know, it, it looks it looks nicer all together, but when you get closer, you want to see that detail. So I'm going to leave that as it is for now. And like I said, I can always go back and do more. You just can't take it back off. So you do too much, you're stuck. So I like that as it is for now. And so I'm going to go ahead and continue on the propulsion unit with that same blending coat. I also want to start working on the collar on the front of this because that's a little different. You need to be a little more careful with misting over that since they're distinct panels versus all of this built-in detail. So it's looking pretty good. And here is the um, pretty much finished blending coat on the rest of the back half. Uh, the, the rear spine through the propulsion unit. And um, you can see when you're at a distance that it looks like a nice light gray. But when you get closer, you can make out the various little darker panels and white panels and things of that nature. So now Two things that I did here differently than my first one. The first thing was, the first one I was nervous and I didn't use the darkest gray as far as this little pattern here. I used the neutral gray and a white. And so it got blended in a lot easier than uh, this time, which I used the dark gray. Second thing I did was I just lightly misted over it and I stopped at a certain point. Uh, your temptation, and what feels natural to you is that this isn't coated enough and so you want to keep spreading it on to make it one solid color because normally when you're painting something you want that color that you're painting to be the final color and so if you have uneven spots and patches and such you want to keep painting so that feels natural to you but in this case you have to fight that and you have to stop at a certain point you have to stop whenever it it feels like it's not quite right uh, in addition you have to let it dry because the, the final dried color is going to look different than when you uh, are applying it. So you can always go back later and add more, but you cannot go back and take it off. So I'm happy with this as it is right now. Show you the back of it. Here we go. 
it's looking nice and dark i can add a little bit more um pigments maybe some weathering powders into those engines to make them a little darker than the rest of it and i can still lighten this up once i get the whole ship done i can go back and lighten up a, some parts if i want to but i'm happy with it now as it is and i'm going to leave it as it is and i really like how a lot of that detail was still there more so than on my original build and certainly when you get back further it looks nice and detailed like there's a lot going on there very busy but it looks like a light gray so okay let me go ahead and do the rest of it this went on pretty easy i didn't have much trouble with it let me go ahead and get the um the front spine and the most important part the command sphere And here's the blending coat on the front half of the spine and the command sphere. And I took off the, um, the mask over the cockpit area that I had painted flat black. There's just some yellow tape behind it that I put there to protect it as well. So looking pretty fantastic. I think that turned out excellently, nicely blended. And again, so the idea is that if you look at it from far away, it's just a gray spaceship. When you get closer, you can see that there are different panels with the idea that, that this ship was built in a harsh environment in space. And so the panels didn't necessarily get weathered at the same rate. And after six months in space going to Jupiter, it's going to definitely have some variations in the colors of the panels but it's nothing stark like they didn't paint the panels different colors of gray in order to make them separate so this this approach definitely is far better doing a blending coat as opposed to trying to just paint very light light differences in shades on the different panels so okay so at this point other than maybe a few minor touch-ups the outside of the ship is completed and it's painted and so now all i have to do is uh trim up the wires on the interior for the pod bay and the cockpit get those installed i already have the remote control sensor as i showed earlier in the back of here so that's ready to be wired in i also have the spot for the um for the pod that is external to the ship to be plugged in and once I get those all wired in and have the cockpit installed, this will be completed. And then I can go ahead and do a final reveal and see if I need to do any more, any more light blending. But for right now, I'm just gonna let that sit and I like how that looks. I like the, the greater detail that is shown there than I did on my first one, so. Okay. All right, fantastic. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this video for this week. Uh, very, very close to completing this. Uh, I don't see any reason why I should not be able to complete this on the next video, which is a little ironic because that will be, I won't call it that, but it will be video number 13, which uh, oddly enough, my first build of the Discovery about three or th four years ago also had three videos. I did have a prologue and an epilogue on it because I made a few changes with some parts that I got in after I built it, but uh, but it took the same number of videos. It didn't take the same amount of time because the first one I completed in about six months. Um, this one, I, it didn't take me longer because I, I was building the entire time. Obviously I finished quite a few more models as well. Uh, and my client understood that. And, and even some of those were models that him and I were working on together and some 3D prints that we made together. So, so that was understood. But I've been doing this for about a year now. So very excited about coming to the end of it and getting it all completed. So uh, we should have it totally wrapped up and have the interior in the ship. And, um, and I will show that the next time. Thank you to all my new subscribers. Stay tuned 
for the exciting conclusion and finale of my new discovery build.